We are uh, continuing our Take a Breath series. Uh, this week we're going to uh, look at In Times of Loneliness. So <clears throat> before we get too far into this, let's, uh, let's get this definition correct. So there's a difference between being alone and loneliness. Jesus went off to be alone so that he could pray and prepare himself. And I'm not talking about those times when you're alone. What I'm talking about is more of a mental state, loneliness. You can be lonely in a room full of people. Let me say that one more time. You can be lonely in a room full of people. Loneliness is a mental quality that affects us. It creates in us this feeling of being separated, like no one cares about us. So when we talk about loneliness and we look in the scripture, there are people who stand out as individuals who had moments when they weren't alone, but they acted as though they were affected by loneliness. So there's a story in the Bible, there's a whole, <clears throat> there's a whole book based around this story of Ruth, who is a, a woman of faith. But I want to talk about her mother-in-law, Naomi. So Naomi is an individual who, who suffered, I believe, from loneliness. And, and when I tell you her story, you're going to understand why she, she suffered from this loneliness and how it affected her life. So Naomi and her husband and her sons moved to a faraway land. And when she was in that faraway land, her sons were married. Neither of them had children. But her sons and her husband died. And she was alone. More than alone... She suffered from loneliness. She lived in fear that there would be no one to take care of her. And she released both of the women who had been married to her sons to go back to their families and to start their lives again. One daughter-in-law left, but one daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law we know as Ruth, stayed with her, stuck it out with her. They went back to where Naomi had originally been from, went back to family. And so in the midst of this journey, in the midst of Naomi's life, she suffered from loneliness. She had lost her husband. She had lost her two sons. No person should suffer that kind of loss. And in the midst of that, she got to a point where she had, I, I don't know if she had lost faith, but she had certainly lost hope. And she was fearful for her existence, and she was fearful that there would be no one to take care of her. In that culture, in that day, widowed women without family to take care of them were kind of on an island by themselves. The church at the time was supposed to care for them, but that always didn't happen. And so Naomi lived in this island of loneliness, and somebody met her on that island. Ruth went to her and said, I'm going to stick with you. It's going to be you and me. We're together. 
And it gave Naomi purpose. It gave her something to focus on other than her loneliness. And she began to focus on Ruth and finding Ruth a husband, somebody who would be a redeemer for Ruth. You see, in the culture of the time, it was the responsibility of a male family member to redeem, to take care of a woman who had been widowed, to give her children and to give her a home. And through her children, who would not be his children, but would be her children and her dead husband's children. And so there would be a whole separate family that would be created by this redeemer. And so Naomi and Ruth returned back to where Naomi had family, and she found for Ruth a redeemer in the person of Boaz, And so this little family was created, Naomi and Ruth and Boaz, and they had children. And at the end of the story, we see Ruth place the baby into Naomi's arms. And we see Naomi's loneliness disappear. In the midst of this story about loneliness, we see that somebody steps into that circle of loneliness and says, I'll be there with you. In our world today, it's easy to suffer from loneliness. We are still in the midst of a time when we are trying to separate ourselves from one another. We were trying to stay apart so that people don't get sick. But in the midst of that, there's loneliness that occurs. And so how is it that we deal with that loneliness, that separation, that desire to be in community with other people, but the inability to do that? And sometimes we have to stop, take a breath, and look around us. Look around us at the people who are with us, who come into our lives, or may already be in our lives, who help us out of those times of loneliness. Remember I said you can be Lonely in a room full of people. And sometimes it's about letting other people in to that loneliness. It's admitting that you're lonely. It's sometimes in helping other people that we combat our own loneliness. You see, Naomi had a purpose when it came to Ruth. She was ready to just waste away and pass on from this world. She was ready to give up. But Ruth said to her, no, I'm sticking with you, you and me. We're together in this. And so Naomi had a purpose. And sometimes when we see people who are lonely, We need to help them find their purpose. So as Christians, we are called to love one another. That was very clear in our scripture today. We are called to love one another. And how we show that love isn't always with words, but sometimes it's with actions. We show our love for one another through the actions that we participate in. There are simple things like putting toys and gifts into a box 
and sending it to children in faraway places. That's a way that we can affect other people. You may reach into the loneliness of a child in a faraway country with a simple gift, a box that you spent 10 or 15 or $20 on. Is 10 or 15 or $20 enough to reach into that loneliness? We saw the, the woman on the screen today. It was perfect. Fit the message perfectly. She, in fact, even said at one point she was lonely as a young girl. And she found hope in the church. She was active in the church. And she received a gift from Operation Christmas Child. And she felt love. Loneliness is overcome with love. We can share our love in many different ways. We can reach into the loneliness of others by helping prepare a meal for a group like Family Promise, by volunteering at the Sunnydale House to help kids find out about God's love. We can overcome our loneliness when we stop focusing on ourselves and start focusing on what God is calling us to do. To go and make disciples and to love one another. When we begin to look outside of ourselves, the loneliness begins to dwindle away. Now, Will loneliness be there? Yes. There are going to be moments when you find yourself sitting there thinking, oh, I'm so lonely. I'm by myself. Even in the midst of everything that is going on around you, there are moments when you feel that loneliness. And like everything else in this series, I'm asking you to stop and take a breath. Focus on God and what God is calling us to be and do. And I know we can overcome that loneliness when we begin to look outside of ourselves, when we begin to care for others, when we begin to be about doing what God has called us to be and do as the church, to love one another, and to make disciples. We can overcome loneliness. So in those moments, stop. Take a breath and look for where God is calling you to be and sharing God's love with those around us. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, thank you for being with us in those moments of loneliness. Help us to look outside of ourselves and to seek and share your love so that one will become two and two will become four and four will become many who love you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the United Methodist tradition, communion is open to everyone. All are invited to the table. Uh, if you have not, you can get your communion elements at either entranceway. On the night he was betrayed, Christ met with his disciples to share in a meal. He took a loaf of bread, he broke that bread, and he passed it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And at the end of the meal, he took a cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, passed the cup, and said to his disciples, Take, drink, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, remember me. We come today to communion to remember. To remember Christ and his sacrifice for our eternal life. We come to remember that he forgives all of our sins through that act of sacrifice. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, I ask your presence here on these, your people, that they would know your forgiveness and that this cup, this juice and this bread would be for us your body and blood. We come to remember your love and forgiveness made real. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. The top of the cup peels off and underneath is the wafer. And then the second layer peels off and underneath that is the cup, the juice. The body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat. The blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, remember Christ. Will you pray with me one more time? Lord, thank you for the forgiveness that is found in you. Help us to know that forgiveness and to share your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Go forth from this place and remember that God is with you. In Jesus' name, amen.